Hello and welcome. I'm Daughter of Darkness, your narrator. The old saying goes that home is where the heart is, but sometimes it's also where evil dwells. Whether the home is currently occupied by the living or not, sinister entities can take up residence, refusing to vacate the premises. And I'm willing to bet they're so rude, they don't pay rent either. So that makes them not only dead, but dead beats. Those are the stories I'll be dealing with here tonight. Be sure to join me here every Thursday at 5 p.m. for new content. And if you like tonight's video, appease the gods of YouTube and share the link, give it a thumbs up, and comment below so we can keep meeting like this every week. But for now, sit back, relax, let me lead the way, and let's Get scared together, 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 together. When I was five and my sister seven, my parents got a divorce and my mom took us to stay with my grandparents. The first night we slept there, I watched as the bedroom door creaked open and a tall black figure floated in. It stopped at the foot of my bed turned to look at me, and I noticed that it had red glowing eyes. I literally fainted from fear, and I woke up the next morning too afraid to say anything to my family. Random things like this continued to happen while we stayed there, like glowing eyes passing outside my door at night. When we were finally able to afford our own place and move out, I remember my sister and I packing and playing on top of the packing boxes. Then, suddenly, her face went pale and she stopped laughing and refused to talk to me. It would be many years before I found out the reason why. We were seven and ten when we moved and we went to a big house. My sister and I had separate rooms upstairs, but the weird stuff began happening shortly after moving there, too. We could hear something hitting the radiator in the hallway all night and we'd come home from school to find our toys lined up facing the door, as if they were waiting for us to walk in, and nobody was home. It was all very unsettling. One morning, I woke up and it felt like my arm was burning. I looked at my arm and I found needles sticking out of it. I looked around to see what could have caused this, only to see all of my toys lined up on the floor facing me. I ran to get my mom and she helped me remove the needles, and while doing so, she told me that she had experiences as well. She told me her room was always cold enough to see her breath, even in the summertime. She went on to mention the stain in the hallway. Since moving in, I remember there was always a six foot tall stain that looked like mold on the hallway wall. She would scrub it clean constantly, but it always came back. She even had maintenance come to check for leaks on the roof or water damage, but they found no such thing. There was no cause for that stain, and it was in the shape of a person, but it was only on the wallpaper. The wood behind the wallpaper was perfectly fine, no moldy stain at all. A few months went by, and I was taking a shower in the upstairs bathroom. I locked the door, but midway through my shower, I heard the doorknob rattling violently. I yelled that I'd be done shortly, but it didn't stop. So I reluctantly got out of the shower to open the door. When I opened it, I saw what looked like a human figure crouched in the hallway. Its face looked like it was sewn together using various color skin grafts. It had red eyes and its sharp teeth hung out of its mouth, which opened slightly when it saw me. It was the same figure that I had seen at my grandmother's house. The first time I saw it, it was too dark to see much, but this time it was partially illuminated, so I saw the face. I slammed the door and screamed for my sister. She came running asking me if I was okay, and she walked me back to my room after I calmed down. 
Shortly before we moved out of that house, it just happened to be the week before Halloween. I came home just at dark and parked my bike along the fence by the driveway. Our backyard was all muddy and totally enclosed by a fence. I left my bike near my stepdad's truck and was about to head inside when I heard a metallic bang coming from the truck. It was too dark to see anything, but I walked towards the truck to see if maybe it was my stepdad playing a prank. As I stepped towards the truck, I felt breath on my face and I heard a male voice whisper, Come here, come here, I won't hurt you. I screamed and I ran up the stairs to the porch. I put my back to the door and turned to see where the voice came from. Instead, all I heard were footsteps quickly advancing towards me, and I felt the breath on my face again as it whispered a little louder this time, Come here, come here. I ran inside, slamming and locking the door behind me. I made so much noise that my sister came down from upstairs to see me panting and pale, standing in the living room. She asked if I was okay, and I told her what happened, so she called our mother. Mom got home a little later, searching the yard with a bat, looking for any signs of an intruder, but she found nothing. The next morning, the police were there, searching the yard and asking me questions. They told me that they only saw my footprints in the mud, no one else's. But they could tell where I started running just from where the marks were I left on the ground. We kept moving houses, thinking it would help. This time, we moved to a trailer about an hour away. But the weird things started happening yet again. By this time, my sister and I were 16 and 18. We would see shadows run through the kitchen and duck down behind chairs. One time, my sister was on a Zoom call with a friend, and the friend told her, don't turn around. Well, my sister did anyway, just in time to see all of her clothes fall off their hangers at the same time. Her friend said that she saw the clothes swinging and told her not to turn around just before they fell. My sister moved out because of this, and my boyfriend moved in. But just before she left, we talked in the kitchen about all the weird stuff that had been happening to us. It was then that I told her for the first time about the red eyes that I saw at our grandparents' house, and she turned pale. She then told me what happened the day we moved out of our grandparents' house. It turns out, the day we were playing on the moving boxes, she looked over to the doorway and saw a black mass walk past. It had what looked like spikes coming out of its back and a red glow to its face. So she saw it too. I was dumbfounded. We never told each other this because we both thought that we were crazy. But we both saw the same thing. Only she first saw it in daylight. When my sister moved out, my boyfriend and I moved into her old room. My boyfriend told me that for the first time in his life, he suffered from sleep paralysis. He would see a skeleton-like woman holding him down and getting right up in his face, nose to nose. He managed to squeak out a, help me, but he wasn't able to wake me up in time. Odd things kept happening there, but when I got pregnant with my daughter, it slowed down some, but only until she was born. When she was about a year old, I put her down on the floor in the living room and went to the bathroom quick. When I got back, I saw that she was chewing on something. When I got it out of her mouth, I realized it was a hospital identity band. I had no idea where she got it. She was still sitting in the exact same place I left her and I know it wasn't there when I walked away. I looked up the woman whose name was written on the band and found out that she lived in the trailer before us. She died of cancer in the trailer. I wonder if that was the woman that my boyfriend saw holding him down. One night before we finally moved out of there, my boyfriend and I listened as footsteps went up and down our hallway in front of our room all night. It would walk to the door, scratch at it a few times, 
then walked back down the hallway and returned to do the same thing again. It did this for two hours straight. We live in a new trailer now and I have two kids. About a year after moving, I woke up one night in a cold sweat. I sat up and saw a dark figure at the foot of my bed and another one next to me and a third behind my boyfriend on his side of the bed. I froze and I watched them for a minute and then I heard my boyfriend say, still half asleep. Tell them I don't like when they stand behind me. I thought, okay, I am done. I got my boyfriend fully awake and we ran to check the kids. I got all the sage in the house, opened up all the windows and filled that house with sage smoke until I felt safe again. My kids are now eight and six, but since they were very little, they would both wake up crying telling me that a man with red eyes touches them while they sleep. So he's still around, and he's after my kids now. I'm 28 years old and currently work for a marketing firm. I live alone in a small studio apartment that faces an old Islamic cemetery. During the COVID-19 lockdown, I visited that cemetery often, out of boredom, to feed the birds and just be outside. But since things have opened up again, I stopped going. But something seems to have taken offense to my staying away. Once I stopped going, I started hearing scratching sounds at night like something scratching inside the walls with its nails. At first I thought it was my neighbor, but I spoke to him and he said he's been hearing it too and he thought I was doing it. We're both spooked because we both live alone. Also, my things disappear, like headphones, stationery, books, and other small items. I always find them either under the bed or in the bathtub after a few days time and the doorbell always rings at night, every night. I went to our building's security office and asked them to check the footage to see who was ringing my doorbell every night, but no one was on camera. And last night, I was awoken to loud banging on my apartment door. There's a very small gap between the door and the floor, and if someone is standing outside, you can always see their shadow. And I did see a shadow but when I opened the door, there was no one there. I again called the building security to have them check the footage, and no one was seen banging on my door. They're beginning to think I'm imagining this because I make so many complaints. I've discussed this whole situation with my neighbor, who has since become a friend, and we're both thinking about getting help from the local church. Update. Since my last post, the activity and the strange occurrences have gotten worse. My neighbor left his apartment and moved to another city as he started to fear for his life. He told me he saw a dark figure that resembled a young boy in the corner of his apartment. It only appeared for a few minutes, then disappeared in front of him. Since he moved out, the scratching in the walls has grown louder and I can also hear scratching underneath my bed at night, too. It got so bad that I moved the mattress off the bed frame directly onto the floor so that nothing can be under my bed. I've been trying to ignore it as best I can. I borrowed a copy of the Koran from a colleague at work, and I keep it at home. He lent me a few Islamic paintings to hang on the wall as well, and he recorded himself reading some of the verses from the Koran and he told me to play them whenever I heard the noises. But nothing has helped. I've started going to sleep earlier, and I bought noise-canceling earphones to block out the scratching noises. I also disabled the doorbell so that it won't ring at midnight, and I keep the lights on all the time. Yet, one night as I was sleeping on the floor, I felt something touching my feet. 
I woke up to hear crying coming from the bathroom. I didn't move. I just sat there on the mattress, contemplating if this was a dream or not. When suddenly, the bathroom door opened wide, all on its own. I just shut my eyes. The crying continued for about 15 minutes, and by then, I had realized that I was indeed awake. When the crying stopped, a very bad smell enveloped me. I didn't move at all. I didn't even make a sound. And then, the same thing that was touching my feet was now touching my back. I started trembling out of fear, but I still kept my eyes closed and didn't make a sound. It continued touching my back for about a minute or two more, and then it moved away. I stayed in that same position for about 10 minutes more before I dared open my eyes. I went to check the front door and it was still locked from the inside, but the bathroom door was still wide open. I was so scared, I left my apartment and sat in the lobby until dawn. I was trying to gather enough courage to go back upstairs, but then I had another thought. I thought I would go to the cemetery and yell at whatever it was that was haunting me to leave me alone. So I did just that. I went to the same place in the cemetery where I used to sit, and I yelled as loud as I could. It felt nonsensical, but I literally yelled and cried and shouted to leave me in peace. Still angry, I came back to my apartment and did the same thing. I yelled loudly to leave me alone, and I told it that I was no longer afraid of it anymore. I then moved my mattress back from the floor onto the bed frame, and I fell asleep the whole day. After that, nothing strange has happened. No scratching, no missing items, no loud bangings on the door, no crying. Whatever the entity was, I don't think it wanted to hurt me because once it found out that I was angry, it stopped. Everything has been normal ever since. But I bet it still doesn't pay rent. This is an update to the Diaries from Hell series that I did a few months back. It was the story of a family that was tormented by a demon that lived in its home for decades. Click on the card above or at the end screen at the end of this video to watch the original series. David Sullivan recently wrote this to me. I was able to keep in contact with the new homeowners for a bit before my own heart-related medical issues sidelined me. Those poor folks have had such a hard run the demon issues do continue. Like my father and I, they both saw the entity. It was during a thunderstorm this past summer. They heard growling in the back hallway near the basement, and they thought some animals were fighting back there. So they went to investigate. And then they saw it. But it wasn't bipedal when they saw it. It was on all fours. They were so scared, they bolted and went to stay with relatives for a while. Then our state was hit by yet another tropical storm, during which time they had a tree from the neighbor's yard smash into the house. It caused a lot of damage. They finally decided to cut their losses, take the insurance payout, and move on. The house is currently condemned and may be torn down, and good riddance if it is. But one thing that I should mention that's making me very nervous, something I don't need right now, is that my teenage daughter now has a growing fear of our basement in the new house. She feels that something is watching her outside the windows. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stories and the update. Thank you all for listening and allowing me to entertain you. It really is the highlight of my week, and I hope you feel the same way. So, 
Until next time, stay scared, my friends. <laughs>